in session course on secrets of success and fulfillment <coughs> we will base the course on shri hanuman chalisa a very very popular composition of tulsidas ji and many of us chant it regularly so we begin with a prayer <coughs> and then go into it ಶ್ಯಾಮಲಕೋಮಲಾಂಗಂ ಸೀತಾ ಸಮಾರೋಪಿತವಾಮ ಭಾಗಂ ಪಾಣೌ ಮಹಾಸಾಯ ಕಚಾರು ಚಾಪಂ ನಮಿ ರಾಮಂ ರಘುವಂಶನಾಥಂ ಅತುಲಿತ ಬಲಧಾಮ ಹೇಮಶೈಲಾಭದೇಹಂ ಧನುಜವನ ಕೃಶಾನು ಜ್ಞಾನಗ್ರಗಣ್ಯಂ ಸಕಲಗುಣನಿಧಾನ ವಾನರಾಧೀಶ ರಘುಪತಿ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಭಕ್ತ ವಾತ ಜಾತ ನಮಿ ಸಮಸ್ತ ಜನಕಲ್ಯಾಣ ನಿರತ ಕರುಣಮಯ ನಮಿ ಚಿನ್ಮಯ ದೇವ ಸದ್ಗುರು ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವಿವರ infinite is the potential of all of us is what the scriptures tell us to tap that potential in us is a very powerful method called invocation to invoke that potential in all of us and hanuman ji is a symbol the moment we think of hanuman ji what comes to your mind the first word that comes to your mind quickly devotion devotion power. strength power power service, service. service. commitment, commitment. Humility. humility okay surrender. surrender so hanuman ji is a symbol of all these and hanuman ji is a symbol of success and fulfillment both there is no project that hanuman ji has taken up uh, which he has not achieved can you think of any which he took up and he did not achieve anything that he took up he was very very successful in that that is one quality of a devotee in the 12th chapter of the gita also bhagwan says that daksha one who is very efficient and is a go getter will achieve what he sets its his mind on he will achieve that so many people think that ye to bhagat hai mila to bhi theek nahi mila to bhi theek no devotee will achieve because the mind is so focused so sharp and has surrendered to higher purpose so hanuman ji is a symbol of success and not only a symbol of success he did not stop there what is that fulfillment in one's heart having got a human birth how do i feel fulfilled 
even when we achieve success we feel the satisfaction we feel good about ourselves and that's why everybody wants success there was one pj which said that um, why was the inventor of matchbox very happy because it was a striking success <laughs> So success makes all of us happy so we all seek success but that happiness lasts for some time again it goes away again we put some other goal again we succeed so that is no doubt one way by which we keep moving in life achieving different goals in life but what is that gaining which nothing remains to be gained that fulfillment where one doesn't any more work for happiness but works from happiness that state of fulfillment is what the scriptures indicate and hanuman ji is a symbol of that everything that hanuman ji did <clears throat> nothing for his happiness and yet was he not the embodiment of happiness and fulfillment itself only a person who has achieved that kind of a state of complete fulfillment will be able to even serve selflessly <clears throat> so through this hanuman chalisa what we are going to explore is different aspects of success and fulfillment this is a very beautiful composition of tulsidas ji <clears throat> the 14th century and it is said that hanuman chalisa was written by tulsidas ji when he was not well he was going through uh, physical problems and there he invoked hanuman ji there he remembered hanuman ji he composed this hanuman chalisa and so even today many people sing hanuman chalisa for the recovery physically if somebody is not well they chant hanuman chalisa because hanuman ji is the symbol of strength as somebody said earlier and not only just the physical strength but is a symbol of holistic strength so tulsidas ji when he wrote this he wrote this in avadhi bhasha and that's why it is a very very popular composition and from childhood one sings this hanuman chalisa <clears throat> it is a prayer hanuman chalisa chalisa is 40 uh chaupais and there are three dohas first i mean two in the beginning one at the end and then 40 couplets in between so that is hanuman chalisa and it is a hymn in praise of hanuman ji because <clears throat> whatever we praise whatever we admire those qualities we imbibe within ourselves and so here through the praise of hanuman ji all his wonderful qualities are what we are trying to internalize <clears throat> through various stories through different symbolisms tulsidas ji has given us a very very powerful treasure a very very vast treasure of knowledge in very simple form <clears throat> written in avadhi bhasha hanuman ji is a symbol of strength surrender and the uniqueness of hanuman ji is this that he is the only devotee who is worshiped as the lord think about it every other devotee or a saint is worshiped or revered as a saint as a great master as somebody who has evolved to achieve that state of perfection fulfillment but hanuman ji is one such unique personality who is not only a great devotee of ram but at the same time worshiped as the lord also <clears throat> so many are the glories of hanuman ji as we sing the hanuman chalisa we will come to know more and more so this is a prayer to hanuman ji singing the praise of hanuman ji what is a prayer 
generally one thinks that prayer is we ask God for something, which is one form of prayer. <clears throat> so our Gurudev Swami Chinmaranji used to say that we don't pray to God, we pray upon God. P R E Y. We don't pray to God, but we pray upon God. Give me this, give me that. Bhagwan is the means to get. And Bhagwan doesn't mind because if we need something, we should go to the Lord only. Whom else we will go? If I need something, I'll go to my father, my mother, who has created me, I will go to them first. So, <clears throat> generally one thinks prayer is to ask. But prayer is an invocation. Invoking the very higher in us is called as a prayer. <clears throat> Whatever helps me to tune up my mind, just like we we connect to the internet, let us say. Hmm? With one click of a mouse, we connect to the internet and then a huge resource of knowledge is opened up to us. So we have invoked, we have tapped that source of knowledge. So in the same way, prayer is that method by which we can invoke the very high pot higher potential in us, the infinite manifesting through us. That technique by which I let go of the lower and tune up with the higher, that is called as prayer. <clears throat> so we will see this Hanuman Chalisa is a beautiful hymn, it is a prayer, it is a praise of Hanumanji. So before we go into Hanuman Chalisa, let us understand the word Hanuman. What do you think is Hanuman? Who do you think is Hanuman? Because when we look at it, it looks very strange that somebody who has the head of a monkey, the body of a human being, or he is just a monkey god, and one may even doubt, did he even exist? Or is it all only symbolic? So who is Hanuman? No. Person with Kiddish ego. Person with Kiddish ego. He killed his ego. Oh, killed his ego, huh? So he is considered as uh, as one with the Lord who has gone beyond the ego. So literal meaning of Hanuman is Hanu means destroyed. Man means pride. One whose pride has been destroyed is Hanuman. This, the chin, one whose chin is broken is also called as Hanuman. <clears throat> you know, many times when our ego is high, our head also is high. The chin is also the symbol of the ego. One whose ego is broken, whose chin is broken, who has a broken chin is called as Hanuman. There is a story of it also, that when Hanumanji was born as a small child, he was blessed with lot of, I mean he had divine powers. And so one day he leapt towards the sun, thinking of it as a ball of, uh, as a fruit. And as he was going closer, 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 he was going to eat it. So this Indra Bhagwan he thought that what will happen if he eats this? So he struck him with a Vajra, that baby Hanuman, and the Hanum Hanumanji fell down. When he fell down, his chin was broken. The sun, Surya Devata. Liliyotahi Madhur Phalajano. There is a chaupai, it will come in that. So his chin got broken. <clears throat> At that time, there is a long story for it, that we will go when we come to that chaupai. At that time, Hanumanji, when his chin got broken, he fell down, he became unconscious. Pavan Devata got very angry and he stopped blowing. So the whole world was suffocating and then they revived Hanumanji 
Then he told all the devtas to give him special powers and blessings. So the symbolism of all that we will go as we move along. But the meaning is Hanu. How his chin got broken? Hmm? Is when he fell down. <clears throat> so Hanuman literally means somebody who is very humble, whose chin is broken. Literal meaning is physically whose chin is broken. <clears throat> and why is he symbolized as a monkey? One wonders actually, why is Hanumanji as a monkey? <laughs> so the mind of ours, Hanumanji symbolizes the mind. That generally the mind of ours is very fickle, chanchal and asthir. So there are different aspects of the mind. Mind is very restless, chanchal. Samadhi, very very impulsive. Balavat gets very strongly attached. Balavat dridham. And to withdraw that mind from its attachments is very tough. These are qualities of human mind. Impulsive, fickle, attached, unyielding. These are four main qualities of human mind because of which its energy gets dissipated. <clears throat> so Hanumanji represents that seeker who has mastered the mind and there are two nice aspects about that. One is Hanumanji in the beginning was serving Sugriv as a minister. So Sugriv represents uh, you know the, the goals or the achievements that we want in the world Sugriva is symbolic of that as long as Hanumanji was working as a minister of Sugriv he was very strong physically morally very upright and he lived in self-control but his real powers never came out. So in the modern life also, when we are chasing a goal, when we want a certain achievement, we live in self-control as far as that goal is concerned. We collect the knowledge, we work hard, we pour in our efforts and we move towards the goal. We achieve that goal also. But still, many times the best in us is yet waiting to manifest. We may even feel happy at the achievement of that goal, no doubt. But the best in us still is yet to come. So it is only when Ram came into his life and he surrendered to that spiritual essence, there the unimaginable potential of Hanumanji started manifesting. So as long as the mind has a goal, no doubt the mind's potential comes out. So one lives in self-control, one works hard, one gains the knowledge, one keeps improving one's skill, all that will keep happening. But really the blossoming of the whole personality happens only when the spiritual knowledge comes in and the surrender happens. So in life of Hanumanji, that is what we see, that he is not just a man of erudition and knowledge and scholarliness and achievement. He was all this till he met Ram. And he was very successful also. But after he met Ram, his whole life took a very different course. And the world saw those things which they have never seen in Hanumanji before. So the mind of ours needs a goal to work on. But at the same time, if there is surrender within and then one is working towards a higher purpose, that brings out always the best. So Hanuman represents that kind of a mind, which has not only achieved self-mastery to achieve the success in the world, but has also surrendered, has also absorbed itself in something which is the divine, which is the higher, which is the spiritual essence. And so he is a monkey 
He is represented as a monkey. Monkey by itself is very fickle. Our goal, if it is there, that will harness the mind which is fickle. But then beyond that, when one has to go, there the surrender happens. There the surrender plays a very vital role. <clears throat> so Hanuman represents those two possibilities in us. One is the possibility of harnessing the power of the mind from it being restless, fickle, impulsive, attached. Harnessing all those powers by focusing it on a goal. <clears throat> and then bring out the best through surrender. <clears throat> So all those qualities, when it is strong and unyielding, that transforms by surrender. When it is fickle and impulsive, that transforms by having a goal. So Hanuman represents that fickle mind which has got mastered completely. <coughs> That's why he symbolized as a monkey. It's a realm of faith. believe that Hanumanji was there because today it is not possible to prove then there are proofs available to make us aware that Ramayana happened and there are lots of evidences for it but to prove that a person like Hanumanji existed may be very difficult today in, in the so called scientific way in which we believe about the proofs <coughs> That's why I am saying it is a realm of faith that there was a person like Hanumanji and in fact it is said in our culture that the Hanumanji is one of the seven Chiranjivis. So he is there even now. But many believe, many don't believe, so it depends on the Shraddha. Uh, so let it be at that level. Instead of debating whether he is there, he is not there, where is he, how do we know, better it is to learn what we can from his life and the way he lived and evolve. <coughs> Our Gurudev, Swami Chinmayananji, gave a very beautiful description of who is Hanuman. I just want to share that with you. is very small to read right? yeah. so he says when you lead a life in complete surrender to Lord Ram that strength that rises from within you that is Hanuman so just like he surrendered to Lord Ram completely we surrender to our Ishta Devta or to a higher cause when we lose our own self, he says that strength that arises from within us, that is Hanuman. When love, beauty, erudition, courage, determination and success come to your life from a source beyond the body, mind and intellect, that is Hanuman. All these can be achieved even within the realm of body, mind and intellect, but they are limited. What is our demand is actually for that which is unlimited. We want love at all times, we want love in unconditional ways. We don't want love which is limited or sometime only people love us, so we want unconditional love. We want to be beautiful always. Botox is an example for that. All the time we want to be remain beautiful, as young, as long. And nowadays it is terrific. The way computer graphics are, you know, there is one video which you should see and I'll show you next time. And how these models, they keep becoming thinner and thinner and thinner. And what is that phenomenon called? Anorexia. Anorexia? Yes. So they, they eat so less, they become so thin. 
and so that video says that now they have reached the limit now beyond this they cannot become thin physically so now they become thin on computer so using photoshop effects they make them so thin and wrinkle free and all that stuff so many things happen and then one sees all that and one believes that this is the definition of beauty today i must be like that so we want beauty at all times we want knowledge we want courage so all these generally one things can come only when i <clears throat> train myself for it and no doubt it happens also but here what gurudev says that all these come to a person when one is going to transcend the realm of finite the realm of the infinite is not something which is dull boring every great master you will see would have lived in this way all this determination success courage erudition beauty love is spontaneous for them and they are able to remain in that state for all times so that source which is beyond that is hanuman ji then he says when you reach when you reach your life's goal like sure shot arrow from shri ram's bow that is hanuman the bow the arrow of lord ram is such that it will never miss the target he is famous for that even arjun is not famous for that arjun's arrow also may miss sometimes but bhagwan ram's arrow will never miss the target symbolic is that hanuman ji is like that who will never not succeed who will ever succeed at all times so when you reach your life's goal not only just the goals in life but the goal of life itself that freedom moksha realization whatever one calls it so when one reaches that goal of life like a sure shot shot arrow from the bow of shri ram that is hanuman in us so he says keep him always within your heart as the situation demands chanting the lord's name in the time in times of peace and in face of imposing challenges for that is where he belongs keep him in our heart and keep remembering hanuman ji any time the mind becomes weak the mind falls for some temptation the mind gets distracted the mind <coughs> it feels unenthusiastic invoke hanuman ji so this is what hanuman ji represents spiritually we have seen at a level of the mind he represents a person who has mastered the mind at the physical level he represents the one who has uh, who is strong and whose chin is broken <clears throat> incidentally gurudev's chin also was broken if you see some of his very early pictures where there is no beard you know, like there's one picture on the book art of art of contemplation no there also he has a beard so you see early pictures where his head is shaven and no beard is there he also has a broken chin it was very interesting so <clears throat> this is hanuman the symbolism of hanuman and now let us go into the hanuman chalisa if you have the book it is page number 9 shri guru charan saroj raja Nijamanu mukur sudhari, Nijamanu mukur sudhari, Barana ura gubara bimala jaso, Barana ura gubara bimala jaso, Joda yak phala chari, Joda yak phala chari. Pugada, Shri Guru Charan Saro Jaraja. Nijamanu mukur sudhari, Barana ura gubara bimala jaso, Yodaya kuphala chari. So here he says, literal meaning is, Shri Guru Charana Saroja Raja, By the dust of the lotus feet of my Lord, 
of my guru nija manu my own mind mukuru sudhari mukuru is the mirror sudhari is to clean so i clean the mind i clean the mirror of my mind with the dust of the lotus feet of my teacher and then what do i do why do i clean my mind baranau raghubara bimala jasu because i am going to describe the glory of raghuvar the immaculate glory of raghuvar jodayaku phalachari that which gives the four pers- the four purusharthas or the pursuits of human life which helps me to achieve all the four pursuits of human life so this is the literal meaning <coughs> so i cleans the i cleans the mind mirror of mine with the lotus with the dust of the lotus feet of my guru to sing the glory of raghuvar through which one can attain the four pursuits of human life what is it tell me so now shri guru one by one we will see who is a guru so gu literally means darkness and ru means to remove so guru means one who removes the darkness of ignorance who gives knowledge is a guru <coughs> so somebody who removes an ignorance of mathematics is called as mathematics guru management is called management guru geography is called geography guru so different subjects when i have the ignorance of these one who removes these ignorance through the knowledge is a guru and one who removes the knowledge ignorance of sat is called as sat guru by giving me the knowledge of the truth the knowledge of the lord within me the one who gives me that knowledge is a sat guru he removes the ignorance by giving that knowledge now why do i even need a guru one girl went and asked guru dev swami ji why do i need to have a guru there are books cds talks available on the internet so many things which are available why can't i learn from all these why do i need a guru and guru dev looked at her and said go and ask the book why do you need a guru that is a precise reason why we need a guru because we can't ask the book anything question answer is possible and our guru ji says very humorously he says if you read a book typically it is going to happen especially when you read the vedantic books and upanishads etc it will typically happen that the moment we read even two paragraphs we don't complete go to sleep so he says while reading the book if you go to sleep the book will never know that you have gone to sleep at least the teacher will know that you have gone to sleep and he can wake you up so the point is that the guru is very important for everything in life have we, is it not that many things even simple things are taught to us by a teacher only even talking walking eating so many things are taught to us by somebody and here is a spiritual path which is so subtle not available now this path is not clearly known so i have to walk that path i need guidance and this is not something which is just transfer of information even in secular subjects we need that kind of a teacher to explain if somebody just writes e is equal to mc square what we will understand nothing somebody has to explain you what does that mean and what to talk of the spiritual path somebody defined secular knowledge you know they said that what is the secular knowledge it is transfer of information from the notebook of the teacher to the notebook of the student without passing through the minds of both <laughs> that is called the secular knowledge if spiritual knowledge happens like that no evolution is possible is only the guru who helps 
and is a living embodiment. Now one can see what is the power of spiritual knowledge and how a person is living. That is what inspires us to live that spiritual knowledge. Especially if we say that there is a state which is beyond body, mind and intellect, how do I even get convinced that there is a state like that? Unless there are teachers whose life demonstrate that. So that person is called as a guru and everyone needs a guru in our culture, we, one believes that. The Vedic declaration is Acharya Van Purusho Veda. The person who has a Acharya as a teacher will know the truth. <clears throat> Hence he says that such a teacher when we find it's a great blessing to find a teacher like that. Shri Guru. And what does he do? He says I cleanse my mind with the dust of the lotus feet of the Guru. So many times we see the depiction. So Lakshmi ji is sitting on a pink lotus. Saraswati ji is sitting on a white lotus. If you actually imagine somebody sitting in a lotus, a lotus will get crushed. There's such a big lotus anyway is not available. Even if you make, you know many times in school plays they make. So they have to keep in between something which is round where you can sit. Otherwise if all the lotus petals open as a normal lotus is and you go and sit on it, it will be very painful. It will poke everywhere. So it is not a question of literally somebody sitting in a lotus. So why are the feet of the Guru symbolized as lotus feet? I always say lotus feet, eyes like lotus. So in our culture, by the way, lotus is supposed to be our national flower. I hope we know. What is our national fruit? Thank God. Huh? National bird is peacock. National tree? National tree? Banyan tree. Very well educated people. Nice. <laughs> you know this. Go and ask your children. Some of them will not know. In one place I was talking on Mahabharata and I, we were describing Mahabharata and everything. Suddenly people's faces are blank. With Pandavas, Kauravas, all that. So I got a doubt. I said, what is this? Suddenly what happened? I think they don't know the Mahabharata. And then we were talking about Arjun. He said, do you know Arjun? He said, yes, we know Arjun Rampal. I said, what is Arjun Rampal? Oh, who is Arjun? Why is our country named behind Bharat, if I ask you? I mean, why is country named as Bharat? So one meaning of that is, the king Bharat ruled our country. Now who is that Bharat? Ram's brother, no? <laughs> Lots of places they answer that. Who is Bharat? Ram's brother. No doubt Bharat was Ram's brother, but not that king on by whose name our country is known. That is Shakuntala and Dushyant's son, Bharat. And in their dynasty only this, our Shantanu and then Dhritarashtra and Pandu and all of them were there, they were born. Bharat Kula. So the point is to be aware. Why did I come to this? From Sri Guru. Lotus. Lotus flower. So the lotus flower is a symbol of detachment. Complete detachment. That it remains in water. It grows in water, remains in water. Gets absorbed into the water. Many times it grows in even mud, dust. And yet, it, it, it is untouched by any of that. So it is a symbol of complete detachment. And one who is established in that complete detachment from one's own individuality, such a realized master is called as a guru. <coughs> in Guru Stotram, there is a very nice line which says, Vedantam Buja Suryo Yaha Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha. 
So the lotus of our personality blooms when the sun of Vedanta rises. Vedanta, Ambuja, Surya. So the Guru is like that sun. And the lotus blooms when there is sun. Same way, in our life we need the knowledge of the Self. That Self-knowledge or Vedant is what helps us to bloom in life. So to surrender to such a teacher is what Tulsidas is saying that Shri Guru Charana and the feet are also symbolic of complete surrender. The lowest part of one's body. And when one touches the feet of elders or the Guru, one bows down the head. Head is a symbol of the ego. So when one bows down in humility, when one surrenders the ego, then the knowledge comes into our life. So the first quality of success and fulfillment, both, is humility. Today the leaders of management recognize this. one management guru called Jim Collins. And he says that humility is the X factor of leadership. A level 5 type of a leader, the highest level of leadership it is. So level 5 type of leader is one who is humble. And their definition of humility is that you should be humble to listen to the customers, get the feedback for product innovation. You should be humble to listen to your employees and refine your processes. You should be humble to listen to all the other board members and see what do they feel about it. You should be humble to recognize if there is a flaw. And those things make us open even in business. So humility is required for everything, actually. In relationships, if I want love and happiness, there has to be humility. For success, to be grounded in spite of success, there is a requirement of humility. For spiritual development, definitely humility is the first quality. Uh, in 13th chapter, the values which are given by the Lord, that these are the, these are called as values or knowledge by Him. So He says, Amanitvam Adambhitvam. It starts with Amanitvam, with humility. So if humility is not there, you will find in the life of Duryodhan, that was the problem. No humility. So even when he had a problem, he could not go to the teacher and confess, saying, Ki, sorry, you know, I have a problem, please, can you guide me? He went there with such pride, because he had Dambha, false pride. Pride is something that I am having for what I have with me or in me. I am very proud of that. That is called pride. If I have some wealth, if I have some power, I have some talent, then I am proud of that. And I look down upon others and that is called pride. But false pride is what doesn't belong to me. And I assume it to be mine and I have it with me. I assume that it is there in me and then to be proud of that, then that is called false pride. So uh, Duryodhan had that false pride. So he could not even go to the teacher and ask that please give me some guidance. I am going through some anxiety. Arjun on the contrary was very straightforward. He did not have an ego issue. He went to the Lord saying, Oh Lord, I am confused. He also gave a lot of justification in the beginning, but then he surrendered. Saying, I don't know what is right and wrong. I surrender unto you. Please guide me. Please instruct me. If humility is there, only then this will happen. And only then the knowledge of Gita came about. Till then, Arjun was not given the Gita, though he has grown up with Sri Krishna. So humility is the first quality, whether it is spiritual life or material life, whether I want to be successful or I want to achieve fulfillment, humility. And that's why the feet of the Guru. Otherwise he could have said the lotus eyes of the Guru. He says, no, the feet of the Guru, Shri Guru Charana. <coughs> if a person doesn't have an altar to surrender to, that person is the poorest person in life. 
if I don't find an altar to surrender because wh that person will live as a finite individual and whole life will just pass. So the faster we find an altar to surrender, the greater, I mean the better it is for us. But what is the altar where I have surrendered my ego? In our culture we have been given that altar from childhood and that altar keeps changing so that as we grow we keep evolving. So for a small child it is Matru Devo Bhava, Putru Devo Bhava that my parents are my gods meaning they are the altar of surrender that today I don't have the wisdom to know what is right what is wrong so when I don't have that vivek I must have that shraddha and I must have surrender to my parents that what my parents say I will do obedience that is where it is a very important aspect when one is growing up <coughs> then one goes to the school one goes to the gurukul there it is Acharya Devo Bhava, that, that teacher becomes the altar of my surrender. And that teacher brings that Ishwara in one's life, where then Ishwara becomes the altar of my surrender. So when I enter the Grihastha Ashram, the society, my family becomes the altar of surrender. At every stage there has to be an altar of surrender to invoke the best in us, to keep us humble. If that altar of surrender is not there, ego will just boost. <coughs> So here, yeah, that's, that's why he says, Shri Guru Charana Saroja Raja. With the dust of the lotus feet of my Guru, Nija Manu Mukuru Sudhari. My mind, I am cleansing the dust of my mind also. So the mirror has been left for a few days without being cleansed it will gather dust. For a few months if you leave it like that there will be oil, the dust will become as though stuck to it and if for a few years if it is left like that it won't even look like a mirror, it will be just lots of dust. And to scrub that effort is required. Here something very contradictory is said. With the dust of the lotus feet of the Guru, I cleanse the dust of the mirror. Generally we would take a cloth and then cleanse. Here he says, with the dust I cleanse the dust. Meaning, the symbolism what we saw, with that humility and knowledge, that surrender that comes about, that cleanses the mind. The impurities that we saw, impulsiveness, attachment, <coughs> fickleness, unyielding nature. These are the impurities and just imagine the mind which has been neglected for so many lives. One has not paid enough attention to it. So a lot of impurities it has gathered on the way. Now that has to get cleansed. So he says with that humility, surrender, I cleanse the mirror of my mind. Why am I doing that? Baranau Raghubara Bhimala Jasu Because I want to sing the glory of Raghuvar. Raghuvar literally means anyone who is born in the dynasty of Raghu. Raghu was the ancestor of Lord Ram. <coughs> so Raghuvar can mean Bhagwan Ram. It can mean Dashrat Maharaj also. It can mean Bharat also. Many places Raghuvar is used for different people. Here it means Hanumanji. How does it mean Hanumanji? When Hanumanji went to search Mother Sita and he finally found Sita Ji there, he addresses Sita Ji as Mother first. He becomes small and then he comes in front. So he addresses Sita Ji as a mother and uh, Sita Ji also addresses him as a son, Tata. <coughs> and then he goes back and when he meets Lord Ram, till then Ram Ji has not looked at him as a son. When he meets Ram Ji, then Bhagwan also addresses him as a son. So as though he is the adopted son of Ram and Sita Ji. 
Hence he says Raghuvar, that he belongs to the dynasty of Raghus. So I am going to sing, Vara means best. Raghuvara means one who is the best in the dynasty of Raghus. Hanumanji is one such person whose character and whose fame is immaculate. Bimala Jasu. <coughs> there are many people who are famous in this world. But they are not spared from criticism. Bhagwan Ram himself is criticized and the most popular criticism against him is why did he send Sita away? There is a talk on the YouTube, go and see. On YouTube, there is a channel. My talks are there on that channel, no? Swami Swatmananda. So go on to that YouTube channel. We had a debate between all the ladies that why did she send Ram? Why did Ram Bhagwan send Sita away? So lots of ladies have come and done the debate and at the end we have given the conclusion. The idea is not to convince anybody but the idea is to present facts that this is the reason, this is what it is. So go and see there, it's very interesting. Why did Bhagwan Ram send Sita Ji away? YouTube channel, Swami Swatmananda there is a YouTube channel. It's also there on Chinmay Sagar channel. I don't remember. There's a channel for of Chinmay Sagar also, South Bombay uh, zone also, there's a channel. So either of these channels you will find the talk which is there. Huh? On YouTube, yeah. So nobody is spared from criticism. Bhagwan Ram is criticized, all the leaders are criticized, everyone is criticized. So they are famous, but somewhere or the other, they are held responsible for they themselves may not be even directly responsible, but they are misunderstood. So their fame is not blemishless. Some blemish is there somewhere. Hanumanji is a rare person. Can we think of any one wrong thing about Hanumanji? That this he should not have done. What a character he has lived. What a life he has lived. <coughs> Not one thing, and nobody says anything about him, which is negative. Just imagine to live such a life. In the world when we live, we try to please a few people and we get tired. Because you can't keep pleasing them. And to try and please everybody is a big cause of stress. So instead of pleasing everyone, what one has to do? Live righteously, live dharma without compromise. A part of that dharma is to be kind, be accommodative, be compassionate, all that also. It's not that I am going to live dharma, full stop, whether you like it or not. It's not out of that some insensitivity. But to try and please everyone is not possible. One will get swayed actually. One will not stay in dharma if one tries to please everybody. Hanumanji didn't have to try anything. He just stuck to his duty and he was so established in his surrender, so selfless. And his beauty is that, that he didn't hurt anybody. You just see, even suppose there is a team that you are leading and you are the team leader. But if somebody else in the team is more having more qualities of a leader, people are more inspired by that person, people look up to that person, people are following that person, somewhere or the other there will become some clash or some negativity or not. But look at Hanumanji's relationship. He was loved, admired by everybody and actually he is considered as the leader, though the king is Sugriv. But between Sugriv and Hanuman there is no jealousy. Between Sugriv and Hanuman there is no misunderstanding. What should be his quality? I am just giving you one example. Like that if you see in Hanumanji's life as we go along, we will find so many beautiful aspects are there. So he says, I am going to describe that glory of Hanuman which is immaculate, which is blemishless. For that I must be ready. Hence I am 
surrendering to my teacher that may my mind become clean my mind become pure to describe the glory of such a great person and what will i gain by doing this why should i sing hanuman ji's glory so he says here jo dayaku phalachari which gives all the four pursuits of human life what are the four pursuits of human life dharma artha kama and moksha if we go by four stages of life then these are this is the order first stage of life is dharma that we are supposed to gain the knowledge of what is righteousness what is the goal of life how to live here what are the laws in this universe a lot of these things that is dharma second stage of life is artha and kama so that i pursue i live in the world i pursue prosperity i pursue happiness i pursue power whatever i need to pursue enjoyment artha and kama then the third stage of life reduce the pursuit of artha and kama and slowly turn more towards moksha and final stage dedicate to moksha so nice way to remember this if you want as a memory aid in the first stage we learn second stage we burn third stage take a u turn and fourth stage no return gain that state having gained which there is no return to the realm of delusion and ignorance sorrow and suffering so learn you can even say second stage is earn so we earn and burn together while learning we are getting burnt also so earn and burn then turn by taking a u turn slowly turn within because 50 years one has lived one has seen enough in life now it is the same thing going to be repeated again and again so slowly take a u turn saying enough is enough now turn towards the lord and then no return this was considering 100 years life span now our life span may be 75 80 85 whatever it is and please remember this is no sanction that spirituality should be pursued after 75 years no this is just a broad division of stages of life so according to the four stages of life this is the this are four pursuits of our dharma artha kama and moksha but according to the order in which a human being seeks them first everybody will seek artha only but i want physical security i want emotional security i want financial security so artha is the first pursuit that any human being will want not dharma and one cannot tell a person to follow dharma uncompromisingly when basic artha only is not there so artha is the first pursuit when i have artha then i want to enjoy so kama is the second pursuit but both these definitely must be based on dharma today what we are seeing is happening all around us is because the dharma has vanished from these two artha without dharma will lead to corruption kama without dharma will lead to aids and all kinds of diseases dissipation of mind energy body <clears throat> so artha and kama a lot of human beings pursuits get limited only to these whole life is limited only to artha and kama one has to come to dharma be good do good follow righteousness selflessness but again not to stop there moksha is to be sought so by describing the glory of hanuman ji how will i get all the four jo daya ko phalachari he says because hanuman ji is a symbol of all these but he did not have artha he didn't have a bank account he didn't have wealth he didn't have so much of prosperity kingdom all that and how will i get that he did not have it by his choice 
but he was capable of much more you will see hanuman chalisa he has that power which mother janaki himself gave ashta siddhi now nidhi ke data that he can bless a devotee with all the eight siddhis and nine types of treasures not ordinary wealth so artha also he has enjoyment how he enjoyed his life more he enjoyed not sense pleasures but he enjoyed reveling in ram ras how to revel in that state which is really the source of happiness dharma embodiment of dharma no where did he compromise ever and moksha who lives always in freedom hanuman ji is the symbol of all the four he has attained all the four and he can bless the person with all the four hence he says jo dayaku phala chari we will just read the second doha but we will take it in detail in the next class buddhi na tanu janike सुमिरौ पवन कुमार बल बुधि विद्या देहु मोहि हरहु कले सबिकार बुद्धि न तनु जानिके सुमिरौ पवन कुमार बल बुधि विद्या देहु मोहि हरहु कले सबिकार विशे बुद्धि न तनु जानिके कंसीडरिंग माय सेल्फ एज डिवॉइड ऑफ मच इंटेलिजेंस और इग्नोरेंट सुमिरौ पवन कुमार आई इनवोक हिम हु इज द सन ऑफ पवन देवता फॉर वॉट बल बुधि विद्या देह मोहि प्लीज ब्लेस मी विथ स्ट्रेंथ नॉलेज एंड इंटेलिजेंस एंड वॉट टू डू अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट हरहु कले स्वीकार नॉट ओनली ब्लेस मी विथ दिस बट ऑल्सो रिमूव द क्लेश एंड विकार five kleshas are there and six vikars are there he says please remove all these which are the cause of my suffering so this is the second chapai detail of that we will see as we go along we will chant the whole hanuman chalisa at the end of this i mean as we are ending now we will just chant the full hanuman chalisa and with that we will conclude shri guru charan saro jay raja निज मनु मुकुर सुधारी भर नौ रघुबर बिमल जसो जोदायक फल चारी बुद्धि न तनु जानिके सुमिर पवन कुमार बल बुधि विद्या देह मोहि हरहु कले सबिकार जय हनुमान ज्ञान गुण सागर जय कपी लोक उजागर राम दूत अतुलित बल धामा अंजन पुत्र पवन सुत नाम महावीर विक्रम बज रंगी कुमति निवार सुमति के संगी कंचन बरन विराज सुबेसा कानन कुन डल कुंचित केसा हाथ वज्र और ध्वजा विराज कांधे मूंज जने साजे शंकर सुवन केसरी नंदन तेज प्रताप महाजगवंदन विद्यावान गुणी अति चातुर काम काज करी बे को आतुर प्रभु चरित्र सुनी बे को रसिया 
सूक्ष्म रूप धरि से यही दिखावा विकट रूप धरि लंक जरावा भीम रूप धरि असुर समारे रामचंद्र के काज सवारे पायस जीवन लखन जियाए श्री रघुवीर हर शिवर लाए रघुपति की नहीं बहुत बढ़ाए तुम मम प्रिय भरत ही सम भाई सस वदन तुम रोज स गावे हस कहि श्रीपति कंठ लगावे सनकादिक ब्रह्मादि मुनि सा कुबेर दिग पाल जहा थे कभी को बिद कह सके कहा थे तुम उपकार सुग्री वही के ना राम मिलाय राज पद देना तुम्हारो मंत्र विभीषण माना लंकेश्वर भय सब जग जाना जुग सहस्र जो जन पर भानु लीलोता ही मधुर फल जानु प्रभु मोद्रिका मेली मुख माहि जल धिलांगि गए अचरज नाहि दुर्गम काज जगत के जेते तुम्हारे ते ते राम दुवारे तुम रखवारे होत न आज्ञा बिन पैसारे सब सुख लह तुम्हारी सरना तुम रचक का हो को डरना अपन तेज संहारो आप तीनों लोक हाकते कापे भूत पिशाच निकट नहीं आवे महावीर जब नाम सुनावे ना से रोग हरे सब पीरा जपत निरंतर हनुमत बीरा संकट ते हनुमान छुड़ावे सब पर राम तपस्वी राजा किन के काज सकल तुम साजा और मनोरथ जो कोई लावे सोई अमित जीवन फल पावे चारो जुग पर ताप तुम्हारा है पर सिद्ध जगत उजियारा साधु संत के तुम रखवारे असुर निकंदन राम दुलारे अष्ट सिद्ध नव निधि के दाता असबर दीन जान की माता राम रसायन तुम्हारे पासा तुम्हारे भजन राम को पावे जनम जनम के दुख बिसरावे अंतकाल रघुवर पुर जाए जहाँ जन्म हरि भक्त कहाई और देवता चित्तन धरई हनुमत से सर्व सुख करई संकट कटे मिटे सब पीरा जो सुमिरे हनुमत बल बीरा जय 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 हनुमान गोसाई कृपा करो गुरुदेव की नाई जो सत बार पाठ कर कोई छोटे बंदे महा सुख होई जो यह पढ़ हनुमान चालीसा हो या सिद्ध साखी गौरी सा तुलसी दास सदा हरि चेरा हृदय महाडेरा की जय नाथ हृदय महाडेरा पवन तनय संकट हरण मंगल मूरति रूप राम लखन सीता सहित हृदय बसौ सुर भूप सियावर राम चंद्र की जय मान की जय बोलो भाई सब देव की जय बोलो भाई सब संतन की जय ओम 
asatoma sadgamaya tamasoma jyotirgamaya vetyorma amritam gamaya om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnasya purnamadaya purnameva vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om So two announcements. <coughs> One is there is a class we are beginning in the afternoon today. It is from 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock. It is called Vedant Fandas. So the Tattva Bodh is a book which is a fundamental book in Vedanta. Those of you who have youngsters who are between 16 and 28, if you would like to send them, please send them. It's a 11 session course on foundations of Vedanta which will deal with individual, world and the Lord. So from today it will start. Uh, details will be available there. Second is we are recording these talks and we will be putting them up onto the YouTube on a channel with my name Swami Swatmananda. So in case any of you miss a session, please go watch the talks because this is a course and at the end of the course there will be some way of evaluating our understanding. It may be happening even in between the course, I don't know. If Anumanji wishes, suddenly you will have a test. You may have a quiz, you may have anything. And also the idea is we should learn anything completely. So if you miss something, please go up there, watch and uh, catch up. <coughs> 